The golden era Hollywood heartthrob led a double life, and it was his secret that cost him everything. Pick any best romantic hero list on the internet. We bet each would feature the velvety, golden heartthrob from the 1950s, Rock Hudson. You might have grown up watching Hugh Grant and Matthew McConaughey in sensational romantic hits. Okay, now talk to me. How are you feeling? Yet if you mention Hudson in front of your mom or grandma, they'd have much to say about this eye candy's irresistible charm. The famous star had everything. Girls running after him, soaring fangirls in movie theaters, and women throwing themselves at him. He was living the best of the best life in Hollywood. But Rock Hudson didn't want any of it. At all. You see, every woman's romantic dream was gay. What are you talking about? And he did everything to protect his secret. Why? You see, it was a time when being openly gay was like walking a tightrope above a pool of piranhas. For these actors, being true to their sexuality could mean the end of their careers and a massive dent to their public images. Take Tab Hunter, for instance, the golden boy of his time. He was known as a heartthrob and was often linked to leading ladies like Natalie Wood and Debbie Reynolds. The truth, however, was that he was in a relationship with Anthony Perkins. Unfortunately, in 1955, a scandalous magazine spilled the beans, and boy, it wasn't pretty. This revelation wreaked havoc on his career, and he was cornered into denying his true self for years on end. And this is why Rock Hudson didn't let anyone in on his secret. So Hudson, who became one of the most sought-out actors in Hollywood, had to go to lengths to hide his sexuality. And in the process, he became a symbol of heterosexual attraction in the movie industry. His finely chiseled features were a work of God's hands. His velvety smooth voice was enchanting, and his strapping frame was why every woman was instantly starstruck when they saw him. Judy, what's wrong? Nope, we're not trying to write a fan fiction based on Hudson, but this is how magazines from his time described him. In every imagination, the golden heartthrob was straight and his audience hardly got to know his secret until he had to publicly disclose his battle with AIDS. But even before that, Hudson lived his life in fear of being outed by the media. Well, I'm not copying a plea. I'm an innocent man. Yep, turns out his sexuality was an open industry secret. Many of his peers knew that he was actually dating his male close friend of that given time. You would think that such a secret would spread like wildfire in Hollywood, trying to bring him down. But the reality was far from it. Hollywood elites were actually pretty good at keeping their hero's big secret. He'd bring his boyfriends to small private events, and no one would bat an eye. Call it fate or luck, Rock Hudson was scouted by a gay Hollywood broker who knew all the right things to keep his client's secret on the DL. Henry Wilson knew how to keep everyone's mouth shut. What many didn't know, however, was the fact that Hudson was being blackmailed by many media outlets during his career. Magazines like Confidential threatened to expose Rock's sexuality to the public. The actor was pretty rattled, and rightfully so. His career had taken off, he was leading the Hollywood scene, and public knowledge of his sexuality would be lethal. And that's where Wilson comes in. Forget about Kris Jenner, Henry Wilson was working harder than the devil in his age and time. To shut down Confidential Magazine, the popular broker traded the secrets of his other two clients just to keep Hudson out of public scrutiny. Yep, gotta ask all our friends to step up because Wilson was a real one. This is not good for my rage. So there were a lot of gimmicks to keep Hudson's sexuality a secret, and despite all odds, his career soared. Yes, that's it. He was the boy who was never supposed to make it through. His childhood was pretty rough. Just at the age of four, his biological father had bailed on him, and unfortunately, his stepdad was a tough nut to crack. In a series of ups and downs, the actor in making had to ditch his original surname to take after his stepdad. For the latter part of his life, Hudson was brought up as Roy Fitzgerald, and well, he was a lot of things. A veteran who served in the Philippines, a truck driver, a nobody who used to hang around studios, and whatnot. The aspiring actor was known to hand out his headshots to studio owners in Hollywood, California. And that's when Henry Wilson took note of him. So first things first, Roy Fitzgerald wasn't a marketable name. There's a reason why Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata goes by Lady Gaga, right? After much consideration, Wilson gave his protege the moniker of Rock Hudson, inspired by the Rock of Gibraltar and the 
Hudson River. Totally random combination, but hey, it worked like a charm. Now, Hudson wasn't a trained actor. Success didn't come naturally to him. Sure, he had looks to die for, but that couldn't take him everywhere. He was doing a bit of everything in Hollywood to survive and thrive until he was hired to play the lead role in Douglas Sirk's Magnificent Obsession in 1954. That film led the actor to play an important role in the critically acclaimed movie Giant. And voila, in the same year, Rock Hudson became an Academy Award nominated actor. But it was his pivotal role in 1959's Pillow Talk that established him as the romantic hero of his generation. The film's soaring success made Rock Hudson into a heartthrob who was the subject of everyone's desire. Women wanted to be with him, and men wanted to be him. Could I help you, Mrs. Scott? Well, yes, thank you. His pairing with Doris Day in romantic movies became a quintessential personification of heterosexual attraction. And then there was no going back. Hudson continued picking roles that put him at the forefront of masculinity and hyper-heterosexuality. A gay man couldn't charm Day, after all. In Hollywood, Hudson became the perfect romantic lead, and when he tried to step away from that image, his movies didn't do well. Oh. So, the trajectory was pretty clear for Hudson. He had to stick in his lane, and a huge part of that was to keep up with his sexuality. One tiny bitsy slip-up, and Hollywood would have sent him packing. And Rock Hudson did what all gay men do to survive in Hollywood at the time. He got married. But this marriage wasn't as ordinary as you would imagine. It was orchestrated by Henry Wilson, and the soon-to-be bride was his secretary. Phyllis Gates. It's almost diabolical when we put it into perspective, but Wilson was so obsessed with protecting his favorite client's secret that he used his secretary to maintain Hudson's pretty straight boy image. Yep, some reports suggest that Phyllis didn't know her soon-to-be husband was actually gay, and she would be entering into a marriage of convenience. As far as she knew, she had hit the jackpot. A crazy famous romantic hero that everyone wanted was interested in dating her, so of course she was quick to accept the offer for the first date with Hudson. A more charitable version of the same story suggests that Phyllis knew what she was getting into. As a close associate of Wilson, she knew of every deal he was making with tabloids and the actors he worked with. Phyllis knew that her marriage with the Hollywood actor was a business arrangement. She would mitigate the gay rumors about her gay husband and his dates on the sidelines. The couple went to a courthouse in 1955 and tied the knot. Yet the marriage was hasty, turbulent, and short-lived. No wonder the Bullards are splitting up! It took three years for the couple to call it quits, and surprise, surprise, the cause of the divorce was pretty obvious. Phyllis was shocked and appalled when her husband started to sleep with men. She accused him of picking up boys from the street while she was left alone in an expensive, well-furnished house. And we know for a fact that this exact conversation happened between the couple because Phyllis had secretly taped Hudson admitting to being gay. Yep, it's pretty nerve-wracking how the marriage dissolved real quick after that particular drama, and Rock was pretty happy to sign the divorce papers. After all, the marriage was Wilson's doing, and Hudson didn't want to be a part of it. Yet, a nasty divorce wasn't a tipping point in the actor's career. The new HBO documentary on Hudson's life, All That Heaven Allowed, reveals something entirely tragic about his life. Everyone knew of his secret, but it only became public knowledge in the most devastating way possible. In 1984, the actor was diagnosed with AIDS. A year later, after struggling secretly with the disease, he came out to the public. But the United States was riding a new wave of homophobia by downplaying the AIDS epidemic. The disease was highly under-researched, and there was little to do about it. Even then, Rock Hudson became one of the first few celebrities to talk about the devastating disease. A year later, the actor passed away at the age of 59. And that's how the world got to know about the secret life of Rock Hudson. Will you be watching the HBO documentary? Let us know in the comments below.